I work in the economics department. I'm also a principal investigator at the Center for Social and Economic Behavior, CSAP. I also belong to the cluster of excellence Contribute, where I recently got elected into the steering committee. My field of research is media economics. I'm particularly interested in the news media and in social media and user-generated content. This is an exciting field these days because the technological changes, digitization and the internet affect media markets in many ways. And this affects all of us because we need the media to inform us. We need us as consumers and markets to make good decisions. We need this also as citizens in democracies to make good political decisions. And therefore these changes in media markets have an impact on all of our lives. And they also mean that we have to reconsider questions about the optimal regulation of media markets, about media policy, about the role for public service broadcasting and so on. Of course, there are differences between social media, user-generated content and public service broadcaster. So first of all, user-generated content is a broader term than social media. A lot of what goes on in social media is in fact user-generated content. Think about Facebook or Twitter, for example. But not everything that is user-generated content is on a social network or on social media. Think about product reviews on Amazon.com. Think about Wikipedia, for example. These are also examples for user-generated content that do not belong to social media. Public service broadcasting is, of course, a totally different thing. <laughs> so these are the öffentlich-rechtlichen Rundfunkanstalten in Germany, for example, or the BBC in, in the UK. And, um, of course, we have a discussion on whether we still need a public service broadcasting system, uh, a dual uh, broadcasting system as we have it in Germany. But my personal take on that is that um, some of the changes in, in media markets make it even more important that we have also some public media. So if we think about entertainment media, for example, I do believe we live in a golden age of music, of television, of movies, of books, and so on. But when we think about the news media, the situation is much more problematic especially if you think about local news and if you think about investigative journalism. These are, uh, this is a costly endeavor and also a risky endeavor that um, needs strong institutions and a good funding. And the traditional business model of private news companies, and say newspapers, in the 20th century has gotten uh, under a lot of pressure due to the changes on media markets. So that's why I believe that we still need, or even more need than we did in previous time, also some public funding for um, topics like investigative journalism and uh, news, and in particular local news. I did my PhD at the Freie Universität Berlin with Kai Konrad and Helmut Bester. I worked for several years at the Social Science Research Center Berlin, WZB Wissenschaftszentrum Berlin for Sozialforschung. Spent some time at the University of Bonn and in Berkeley. And right before I moved to Cologne, I was junior professor for economic policy in Berlin. Well, Cologne is not the most beautiful city to my mind, um, but it does have some nice streets and I happen to live in one. And it does have a very good university, and I'm proud to be a member of this university and this department. And uh, the quality of life in Cologne is pretty good, and people are amazing here. So one of the things that I like about my job is that we always have several very good students in, in, in all classes that I teach. I'm actually surprised and um, impressed by the quality of the students, about by their sharp minds and their willingness to learn. I have three main goals. First, to do research. My research should be relevant, 
rigorous and creative and focused on media economics. Second, to help students to develop their own ideas and to teach them about the changes in media markets and how they impact all our lives. And third, to be of service to the faculty, to the university, to the profession and to society at large. Cologne is actually a good place to do this type of research. Um, the topics uh, touch on many different disciplines. So I personally have learned a lot from my colleagues at the marketing department who know a lot about advertising, which is a major source of revenue for media companies. I have also learned a lot from colleagues in the political science department and from colleagues in information systems. So this kind of interdisciplinarity is uh, crucial for my work, even though what I do is clearly focused in economics. I also talk a lot to uh, even broader colleagues from the university, uh, from the law department and from the humanities who are interested in, in related topics. So that's a very inspiring environment for me to do research in. So we also have in Cologne here the Excellence Cluster a Contribute together with the University of Bonn, um, which is a great opportunity to do research on, on these type of topics. It's actually the only cluster of excellence uh, where economics is the main subject in all of Germany. The objective of this paper is to propose a new measure, a new approach to measure the political position of news outlets, say online newspapers and so on. The key idea is to rely on selective tweeting by politicians. That is, if a politician tweets a link to some article on, say, Spiegel Online, then this is usually because the politician agrees with this article and thinks that the article supports her political position. And she wants this article to have a bigger audience. That's called selective tweeting. And our idea was that the selective tweeting also shows the preferences that politicians have over different news outlets. And we can use these revealed preferences, as they are revealed on Twitter, to measure the political position of news outlets. So if an outlet is systematically more tweeted or retweeted on Twitter by right-leaning party rather than left-leaning parties, we would take this as an indication that this outlet itself has a political position that's leaning to the right and vice versa. This is a new approach to measure political positions which should be used in conjunction together with more traditional approaches that rely either on text analysis or relies on data about the typical audience of a particular media outlet outlet so that if for example a newspaper has many left-leaning readers this would be taken as an indication that the newspaper itself is leaning towards the left. As all existing measures of political positions of news outlets our measure has some advantages and some disadvantages. So one advantage is that it's pretty easy to do. You don't need many data and you don't need much data. You don't need very sophisticated um, analysis methods. So I think it can be use, uh, useful um, as an additional method in, in this area. Excellent, interdisciplinary and collaborative. <laughs>